The Pro Plus Capo is the first Dario offering to feature FlexFit technology, a naturally responsive silicone formula that mimics the action of a human finger fretting a string. With the Dario Pro Plus Capo, every string rings clear, clean, and in tune. <laughs> All right. Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for From Your Guitar. Today I am so glad to say I'm with Aaron Lee Tasjian, but I'm even more happy than that to say that we're back and doing things in real life. We're being safe. We got our thing. We got our shots. We got our vaccination. We're good. Negative tests. We're going to we're going to talk gear. This is so great to be in person. Aaron, thank you for inviting us into your home. Oh. Talk some guitar stuff. This is great. A pleasure. Thank you guys for being here. I'm huge fans. So yeah. It's, it's an honor to, to have you in my home. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And let's just get right to it. It's so cool that you, you played us in with the 12-string because uh, as anyone's seen you live, it's a big part of what you do. So talk to me about this space-shaped machine. For sure. Um, so this uh, is a guitar that was made by a fella um, from the great state of Ohio, uh, Mr. Scott Gorsuch, um, who was like a, a really cool like power pop kind of singer-songwriter when I was a kid and he had this song called Purple that they played on the radio a bunch in my hometown in mm -hmm. Ohio in the 90s. And um, as he uh, grew up, he decided to start building guitars and, and um, I was looking for a 12 string um, and I was really like, I was trying to find like sort of like maybe one of those Jerry Jones guitars oh, yeah. or something like that. Because they're just so reliable. I feel like you could put a capo on at like the seventh fret and it's still in tune mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Which for a 12 string is pretty rad. So I called my friend Andy Harrison who um, does guitar teching for Beck and Cheryl Crow and a bunch of people. And I said, hey man, um, you know, I'm trying to find like this 12 string. And he was like, dude this guy from our town <laughs> who you may have heard of is making amazing 12 strings and like you got to check him out and so I found Scott Gorsuch's info and I was like man I really want to get one of those 12 strings and he was like uh, absolutely um, and uh, and also hit me to this really cool uh, double neck guitar that he was doing which is the same body shape but then also has like an inverse smaller body shaped guitar that connects or disconnects with a magnet, um, so you can do like the full on like Jimmy Page double neck, but I'm you know I'm not uh, I'm not quite at that pay grade, so <laughs> <laughs> I just figured you know six strings is a lot, twelve is probably one too many, and and uh, I'll, uh, I'll 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 you know try to unlock the mysteries of of what happens with just the twelve strings for now. Um, and it's really fun, man. I really love the guitar. It's 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 a really cool way he set up the um, the bridge pickup here, which uh, obviously is like a humbucker pickup. But he made the tone knob a pull. Okay. So if you want uh, to uh, engage the humbucker, you actually pull the the knob out. Otherwise, uh, if you're just sitting here, you're just using that as a single coil. So you still get that sound as well. And then obviously P90. Um, in the um, neck position, which I love P90 pickups. Yeah, I, I can't say I've seen too many on a 12 string, so I, I, I'm curious as we go through the, you know, examine the tones that, that this thing can produce, the 12 string and the P90 marriage. I, I'm curious how that, that coexists, because it's, it's, it's an unusual pairing. Yeah, man, it's, um, it's cool. Like, I play this guitar in, uh, in, the, in, our tr in the trio setting live a lot too, so it's interesting, like, I'll do a fair amount of soloing on it mm. and for like playing lines and stuff like that, like actually the P90 sounds really cool, like oh, cool. as a solo voice kind of. So I use it a lot for that. Nice. Now, is there anything that you had like requested 
from the builder from Gorsuch, or is it just kind of like this is his stock model and this is what it is? Um, I think you know definitely like um, the pickup configuration. Um, he does a few different things depending on you know um, on what you want to try to accomplish with it. Um, but I, um, you know, I, I liked the idea of, of being able to, to have this be a single coil sound mm -hmm. if, if I wanted it yeah. to, that um, sort of more traditional 12 string kind of sound or whatever, I guess. Um, but, um, and yeah, and the, and the color. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so important. I, I totally, man. Like I was just like, I was like, you know those like old guitars and it was called like surf green yeah. or something like that. I was like, that's the color I want. And he was like, all right, man, I'll find it. <laughs> what about, I have, since I've seen it on stage, the first thing that caught me even more than the shape were like the, the configuration of the, the, the keys. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and it's a bright, it's a bright idea. You know, it's like this way, you know, it's so easy. I feel like sometimes if you're just tuning a 12 string fast to like get confused and mm. turn the wrong pay if it's like live and you're trying to tell a story at the same time or yeah. whatever so the yeah it's just like just having them feel different I you know if like I'm just looking and guessing which one it is like yeah. I'm, it's it's easier for me to guess <laughs> and I guess I also imagine too like better finger real estate because the bigger oh kind sure of clues on style ones are kind of clunky in, in in terms of size it's true man it's true they are and um, you know the this kind of like makes it easier too it's like with those string winders sometimes it's like it's always like it sucks when you feel like you're like hitting the other tuning yeah. pegs as you're like trying to like wind the string up or whatever. So this kind of avoids that pitfall as well. Well, cool. Uh, I, we'll come back to this when we get yeah. to your pedal board because I know that's such a crucial part of your sound and it gets used a lot. Absolutely. But maybe let's talk about the two other guitars here Absolutely. You got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, um, in their own right, are pretty cool. Yeah, man. So let me just do that. Um, so this one um, is made um, by a company called Southside Guitars based out of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, which is uh, one of my favorite places to go. I, I love playing there. Good people. Um, and I, t I learned about this guy, uh, Tom, um, who uh, is, the, is the builder there, actually from um, Bruin and St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Okay was playing these amazing Telecasters. Yeah. And I'd just be like, man, like, where, do you, where are you finding these Telecasters or whatever? And he's like, actually, it's all this one guy that's making them huh. out, of, uh, out of Birmingham. And, um, and he, had actually already <laughs> he had already made this guitar. Um, and I think it was just so weird, like, no one had bought it. Yeah. Kinda. It feels wrong. And like, I, I, before I made the, the remark about marriage between the pickups and stuff, this feels like a divorce because it's a Gibson <laughs> with the Explorer. And then you got the obviously, I don't want to say blatant to get Tom or, and Southside in trouble if they haven't already gotten in trouble. It's a, it's a pretty fendery neck. Exactly, man. <laughs> no, and you know, it, and it's, and it, I just thought like, wow, what an interesting looking guitar. Yeah. It just really struck, I don't know, sometimes like weird things just uh, hit me, hit me in, in the sweet spot, I guess. But, um, I just thought it was so interesting looking. And then, you know, when I picked it up, I mean, feel how light it is, too. It's like, oh, wow, it's, yeah. even with the Bigsby on it, yeah. like, that's a pretty light guitar, yeah, yeah. you know? And so my show is, pr like, I'm jumping around and jumping off of amps and stuff. And so for me, it's like, this is ideal because it, you know, it flies well. Yeah. Well, could you plug it in and we'll maybe hear what it has to say? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and it, as, it, as we catch up here, it even has like a little bit of jazz master influence with the with the the barrel on the the bridge there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really like it's a really cool guitar. Um Oh, I got it in drop D. Let me just Now obviously you use a 12 string for 12 string songs, but in, in as we allude to the next two guitars are more standard 6 strings. When would this get brought out, or when would this be used on a set? And I assume you do tour with this. Still? I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This like these three are pretty much my main guitars that I play live, um, and so this this comes out for um, a lot of stuff like 
a lot of the earlier stuff. Um, I, like this, this guitar is cool because it's a great rock and roll guitar, but it's also like, I can get pretty country on this guitar. Yeah. So like my earlier songs like Trouble With Drinking yeah. or like, this kind of has a sort of telly kind of thing, mm -hmm. esque thing that it can do that works great for that it's stuff. It's like the telly custom vibe with the, the single coil and the, the you know, Keith Richards setup. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that sort of thing. So it's cool for that. But then also like, um, you know, like my first album in the Blazes, um, there's like uh, this kind of like shuffle tune on there called The Dangerous Kind, which we've just turned into like this like 10 minute long. <laughs> <laughs> jam. It's jam, basically, yeah. Um, and uh, and I, I, I'll often like, uh, pretty much it, yeah, every time like I play it on this guitar, um, it's, uh, it's also like, um, because it has the single coil thing, like it, 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 uh, it rocks, but it's like, uh, I don't know how to say this right. Like it's, it's not, it's not dirty. It's like gritty. Mm. It still has some like clarity yeah. to it at a certain point. So, um, yeah, but you know, for something like, uh, for something like this. Uh, like these dudes here. Let me see. Uh. Yeah, totally, dude. It's like instantly that kind of thing. So, um, but then, yeah, also like, uh, let's see, like, oh, like my song East Nashville, song about a train. <laughs> it's great for like this kind of shit, like. gets that like that honk honk country honkiness <laughs> to it too so it's really versatile in that way for me cool man and uh do you ever really use the neck pickup much i, I noticed um, both county there was in the bridge yeah i do like uh like i have this song called the truth is so hard to believe um that i play on this guitar that has this kind of like crazy like octafuzz <laughs> It does it. <laughs> yeah, man. So it gets nice and beefy and like big and, and chunky too. Well, cool. Should we move on to the sure. to the jazz master? Absolutely. Or as a, I'm sure you'll inform me if, if it's not a jazz master. <laughs> I see that it's another south side. It is. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's not quite, but um, it's uh, it's a guitar that I had. Um, I had when I play um, live solo. I don't play acoustic much in in the live band uh, setting these days, mm -hmm. um, I th because like I was saying, we do a lot of trio gigs and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, but when I play solo, I have to, usually have two acoustic guitars because I I keep one. I have a hummingbird that I keep tuned down a full step. Okay, um, and so I kind of had this guitar made. To, to serve in a similar fashion like as an electric guitar. Mm. So this is tuned down um, a full step um, from, from, uh, from standard tuning or whatever. So the low note there is D. Um, and it's, I use it on like uh, this song called Strange Shadows. Um, and because uh, it has this great sort of like cowboy sounding guitar, uh, it's it's in the key of uh, let's see, I guess this is B flat, but the line goes like this: it's like. Beetle 
Bulls meets cowboy. Kinda, yeah, you know? well, it's like, like if you don't believe that a jazz master can do country, you just need to look up an old Johnny Cash video. Seriously, Luther Perkins. man, exactly. All so. those all those guys played played those guitars. So I use it a bunch for stuff like that. But then also like finger picking, like um, kind of stuff um, that I'll do. Um, like I have this song called Dream Dreamer um, that's really kind of like um, uh, super uh, plaintive um, and and finger picky, um, and this this guitar is great for it. So I'll play a little bit of that. It goes like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should be on a beach but we're landlocked in Tennessee so it's like maybe we're floating down the Harpeth or something totally man. contemplating life drinking hand that's right <laughs> I love that vibe well we'll dive into your amps now Aaron sure and if you want to grab your 12 string yes and uh, we'll, we'll talk about your two amps set up here and then we'll we'll go through your pedal board cool as we've kind of already heard yeah there's a lot of noises lurking on the, <laughs> down there yeah man and uh, I guess to wrap up with guitars real quick uh, you mentioned full step down for tuning and then probably standard is mm. kind of their two main tunings. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. And just occasionally into like drop D, okay. you know, um, for, for a song or two. Um, just like, it's, drop D just always sounds great to me. Sometimes you got to rock. Like no matter what context I hear it in, I'm <laughs> yeah. just always, you know what I mean? Cause like it's, it works in so many different ways. Like I love it in really heavy music, but I also love it sometimes in like something that's really twee and kind of like yeah. not that at all. Kind of gives it this sort of like. It's like a cross pollination. Yeah. Like, a, <laughs> like it shouldn't, but it does. But it, it does. Works. Yeah. And you're just like, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, amp setup is, is, is pretty basic. Fender. Um, Fender all the way and uh, a Princeton Reverb, um, which is like a, a, a 68 reissue, I think. And uh, I had a friend uh, mess with it a little bit. Um, and uh, so I'll play electric guitar at my solo shows as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I was always finding like, man, it's it's nice to be able to have like some extra, um, like low end uh, when that's happening. Um, it just makes the rhythm stuff feel cooler. Um, so you can actually, I set up, uh, he set this amp up so that the um, bass knob and, and treble knob are both uh, pull. Uh, knobs which kind of gives you a nice little like low end. Is it like a boost of some sort? Boost, or is it like okay, basically, yeah. And uh, and so suddenly it's like. And there's with the treble. So it's interesting, like that to me almost like adds a little bit of mid range or mm. something to it, like when you when you pull the treble out. But um, and then, you know, just uh, your standard. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a cool cool little Princeton reverb. And um, let's see. Do you let's... A B and uh, or are you doing like a stereo? I'm doing an AB thing, yeah. Okay. So I this one I use a lot with the 12 string because okay. it's it's kind of got a you know it's cleaner um, 
this, uh, sorry, I have this Strymon was still on. You can hear like it gets nice and clean and chimey. Birds, beetles. <laughs> totally. Patty. It's All that, <laughs> yeah. It's like perfect. Um, and then, yeah, this is like just full on rock and roll kind of like um, you know, the, the Tweed Deluxe thing or whatever. Um, but... <laughs> it's funny, like, how obviously different amps can be made by the same company, but they have very different characteristics of how they sound independent definitely definitely um and yeah it's like it's it's nice to for me like to have something where to have a situation where like because my music like goes back and forth like guitar tone wise from like stuff that it like you really want definition there mm -hmm. you know and 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 like if you lose that like it's it makes it feel less musical to me, you know, whereas like with something like this, it's great to just, you know what I mean? Like, it's like perfect for that kind of thing. So yeah, windmills and all, all oh, the whole nine <laughs> yards. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I should have asked while we're going through the guitars, but uh, we'll put up a photo because I know you, you've been in premier guitar with this specific guitar is the 69. Yeah. Is that, is that here or is that, is. is that, okay. Let me grab it real yeah, quick. Yeah. Because I know that's an important guitar for you. Not only just you use it, but also uh, there's a cool story behind it. Yeah, let's. I was gonna get that out anyway, and and I totally forgot. So let me. Yeah. So this is uh, this is my my uh, Gibson ES335, um, which I um, did not. It's it's one of the very few guitars that I that are in my possession that I didn't actually acquire. Hmm. Uh, it, was, it was given to me, um, and uh, the circumstances were, um, uh, we'd been playing at South by Southwest, and we were staying at this hotel that was just like a little bit outside of town up the road on 35 mm -hmm. there. And uh, you know, we, it was like one of those situations where we like came home to change out of our sweaty clothes yeah. into some other clothes to get sweaty. Yeah. Um, and then go back like to our next show or whatever. So, I mean, you're literally talking about what, you know, however long it takes, you know, four dudes to change their outfits. Yeah. Like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, Not something even, like yeah. that. And in that period of time, like somebody had just like uh, see, seen us loading out and like followed us to the hotel Dang. and like smash, like I must have done it as soon as we parked the van or whatever. Um, and just smashed the, the vehicle and, and, and took my old, my 60s Gibson that I had and, and our, our, uh, our singer and guitar players, old Gretsch that, that he had. And um, yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was a sad, the, it was, it sucked too because they only took the best guitars. We, like they had clearly like they fully had, staked us out. They, like, they had some knowledge on what they were getting. <laughs> they left my like three hundred dollar Fender like yeah. <laughs> right where it was. They knew. You know, yeah, man, they really got us. But so I came. I was living in New York City at the time, and I came home um, from that, and I went to the Rockwood Music Hall to see. Uh, my friend Anna Eggy sing, who's one of my favorite singer-songwriters, really, really good and amazing um, get acoustic guitar player. Um, and she, uh, I was just like, if anybody can cheer me up right now, it's Anna Eggy. And uh, I was standing there watching her show, and I looked over, and Ken Rockwood, who owns the Rockwood Music Hall, was suddenly standing next to me, and he said, hey, man, uh, come, come talk to me for a second after the gig is over. And I was like, okay. And uh, so the gig ended and, and he took me upstairs to his office and he pulled this guitar out of like nowhere and was like, man, I, you know, I've, I've had this in, in, in my closet and uh, I just don't play it very much anymore. And I heard about what happened to your guitar at South by Southwest and I just, I really didn't want you to be without a guitar. Mm. Um, so I, I just, I want you to, you know, take this and play it. And um, I, it's yeah, it's been it's been with me uh, ever ever since then. That was in like 2012, I guess. Okay. Um, and uh, I play it all the time. Um, it's the um, 
I, j uh, we, I got to do a, a record with uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard uh, this oh, past yeah. year called Co-Starring, which was like... For me and everybody in my band, it was we were like we couldn't believe. First of all, Ray Wiley Hubbard is incredible, and we we felt am amazing to be working with an artist like that. But also, like Ringo Starr was playing on the record, so it was just like, you know, to the thought that like our names would be on a record with like you're among royalty. I mean, holy smokes, man! Like <laughs> we were just blown away um, that he even asked us to do it. But this was the guitar I played on uh, on that session, um, and the the. Um, the the song um, that uh, that Ray uh, had us play on was this really cool uh, kind of tribute to to Tom Petty and 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 some of the other great uh, rock musicians that you know we've been losing more recently um, called Rock Gods mm. um, and it's a really really uh, great song I don't mean to like be tooting the horn of something that I played on but like it don't listen to it for me listen to it because Ray Wiley Hubbard is an amazing songwriter yeah. but yeah it was super fun and uh you know it was it felt it felt really good to like use a guitar um that had been given to me uh through such like you know an amazing you know soul and spirit like ken rockwood to honor another amazing soul and spirit like tom petty like it, yeah it's paying it forward totally paying man. homage yeah well before we get back to the 12 string and continue your pedal board do you want to like I know that you plugged in, we tuned up, we yeah. maybe here. Absolutely. Lucinda Williams there for you. Man, it's a great sound on guitar. And, and, and to be correct, it's a 69, right? Mm -hmm. And to your knowledge, the pickups are, are original. Original, yeah. Cool. Yeah, sure are. Well, right on. Let's dive back into the 12 string. Cool. And then uh, we'll talk about your your small pedal board, but the pedals you do and you have chosen <laughs> do a lot. Yeah, man. It's it's. Um, I think that's part of the goal for me when I'm choosing a pedal is is uh, to choose something that um, that I can kind of like play with and maybe uh, or possibly not end up using the way in which it's intended necessarily <laughs> but just you know in a way that that feels um, you know musical to me because yeah. it's like I think a lot of times like you know, uh, effects, um, you know, are, are oftentimes used to like color sound, but I think like sometimes like if you, if you're really just willing to like let them rip and like let them just kind of go off and like, you know, have weird like saturations that disintegrate in some sort of bizarre way or something like that, like you can almost like create like a whole other, uh, you know, kind of sound or whatever than like, you know, what, like just an affected guitar. Yeah, you know? there's, there definitely would be a hot take and I'm sure people will tell me one way or another is that there's an art to playing the effects, like yeah. letting them, whether it's playing notes further apart or slower to let that, whatever the effect is kind of bloom and blossom. Totally. And then of course, if you get down on the pedal board and hands and knees and start twiddling knobs, then chaos ensues, but yeah. There's an art form to that. Yeah, man. I th I think it's I think it can be fun, you know. And I, I like to particularly live. Like I just love to invite like Sonic Mayhem into the mix. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kind of like trying to control like a Bronco. Yeah, like, man. I see mean, see where it takes us. Let's just see what happens. Let's ride that sucker. Well, we've heard it a bunch, but let's formally introduce the the Strymon. It's kind of been like a, a main ingredient for you. Yeah, I love the. It's the Strymon Deco pedal. And um, I got it just uh, after seeing it on like a bunch of pedal boards of people who I would always just be like, how are they doing that? Mm. You know, um, I don't know if it was that pedal or not specifically. <laughs> like, I never got around <laughs> to asking really, but it was just like, it was just one of those ones. And then, 
you know, when I read about like what it does, like the tape saturation and then the different kinds of like tape delays and flanging mm. and chorusing and stuff like that that you can do, I was like, oh, that like for the for the kinds of sounds that like I'm you know, creating like on guitar, particularly on like the Karma for Cheap record, for example, like it really comes in handy for that stuff because it's, it's sort of like, you know, you, you, you sort of want this uh, kind of thing that almost sounds like it's sort of being destroyed as it's being <laughs> Yeah, because before this, didn't you actually have a tape echo? Yeah, that I you did. Used? That was part of the... Yeah. 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 And it, it melted, unfortunately. Yeah, you were telling us before we were filming that, like, right before it sounded the best, because the sun <laughs> was literally melting the tape. You know, we say, like, melt faces, and we're going to melt, <laughs> like, when I shred. But, like, the sun literally melted your tape mid-solo. Yes. <laughs> and it sounded amazing. It was like, it's yeah. Thank goodness that it happened mid-solo and not well, just... One way to go off in the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. But the strymon you kind of have as like a slapback, but then also like some weird chorusy mm -hmm. flange. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a cool, it's a cool uh, sound. Um, so like, yeah, it's the, the thing that does the kind of uh, flanginess um, in, uh, is, is also the, the thing that does the slappiness. Um, but you can sort of adjust um, this sort of lag time knob, they're calling it here, okay. um, is what sort of like, uh, will dial in like the, the, the slap on it and stuff. But I actually love to just turn the, like, I love to just make chords and turn them. <laughs> Just turn the knob afterwards because it kind of does that weird like yeah. kind of a thing. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't know how many people really probably use it for that. Not a lot. But anyway, you can just he just to hear how it sounds on its own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is kind of the idea. <laughs> Dial in a little, dial in a little bit of slap here, so you can hear that. And then what I like to do when I'm playing it is is sort of like ma manipulate like the ends of each of those like ringing chords. Mm. Um, so I'll kind of do this. I'll go like. Uh, You can kind of hear, like, sometimes I would just leave the delay a little bit longer mm -hmm. just because. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun pedal. It really is, man. Like, it's fun to kind of, like, get, like, like physical, like, in terms of, like, making the effects happen yourself sometimes. Mm. Like, for me, it just it creates, like, a new level of sort of engagement you know, with an effect, you know, in a way where I would normally just be like turning it on or Setting turning it forget, off. And yeah. yeah. Like I, I do, I do like, as you said, sort of like playing the effect mm. a little bit sometimes. It's, it's, especially with that, it gets real exaggerated with your 12 string, totally. which is kind of like that n normally chorusy sound. And then with that pedal, the way you're to have it dialed in, it really gets seasick, which is lovely. <laughs> 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 Gotta take some drama man before you. <laughs> So uh, what about the DD7 now? How is that used? Yeah, so I use this mainly as like a um, uh, like a reverse delay setting. Okay. Um, and it's kind of cool um, because it like, uh, like on the song Don't Overthink It, for example, on my new record, um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have this sort of like enveloping thing. Um, although I did do some of that with the tone knob on the guitar as well on the record. Um, but it, you can kind of hear it sort of has um, this kind of great trail. Um, and in the, in the trio setting, like, it's, it's fun sometimes to, like, just let the effect, like, fill out a little bit of extra space, mm. you know? Um, so, the, the, you know, it kind of, like, it widens the, you know, the part I'm about to play a little bit as well. Um, but this is like the main line from uh, Don't Overthink It, 
um, which is on the off the new album. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's kind of cool, like, uh, just gives it like a cool little tail and stuff. And like, I usually have this like, uh, this thing that kind of like slowly like opens up the, um, almost like if you were just like really slowly turning the tone knob, yeah. like the whole time. Um, so, or, or like taking your foot off a wah super mm. slowly kind of, or yep. something like that. Um, and, and so together it kind of almost like ends up sounding more like a synthesizer sort of than like a guitar. Hmm. Now you bring up the synthesizer, which is the next pedal to the left is how do you use the Mel 9? Yeah. So the Mel 9 is like, there's just like really, there's super dumb ways that I use it. Like, <laughs> like this, for example, um, in the, um, in the song Sunday Women on the new album, um, there's, uh, um, the second verse, uh, all the verses in that song are built around the four chord, and, and the chord progression goes like this. It's like... So in the second verse, this sort of like um, uh, Mellotron choir sounding thing comes in mm. and, I, and I just play it like on the guitar like this. I just go like. Now, is that something you probably got after you recorded it and you're like, how do I figure this out in a trio setting? Because I know that you've performed with keyboardists before. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like a and it's, solution. It, it's interesting. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you have a record like ours where there's a lot of different parts happening simultaneously, like sometimes I'll end up covering what was a keyboard part on the record on guitar mm. or vice versa, yeah. you know, just depending on what the song is and like, what else I have to do vocally and like all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we take all that kind of stuff into account and then just like the workload kind of gets divided up more on like, well, my, all my hands aren't full right now. So like, I'll do that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we heard a little bit of the octave fuzz and we can get to that and address like what it actually is, but we should acknowledge the, the, the diamond here. Now that's probably more of a standard just drive pedal. Yeah, okay. I, I I like that company Diamond a lot. Um, I know a lot of people who use their like delay pedal, um, but I I've always loved this J Drive. It is it's just a really like you know great like mid rangey crunchy sound and like overdrive. Mm. But then it it also has that really nice clean boost channel okay. on the end of it. That's just a pure that's all it is, you know? So if like, if you're just looking to like edge your natural tone up a little bit sometimes, you know, um, even like without any other effects, like it's great for that kind of stuff. Okay. Obviously for solos, if you have a cool tone going, like that'll give you a nice little just boost more. for it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really handy, like functional pedal in that way as well. Now between the two, do you, which one would you say is on more or utilized? Is it the, the fuzz or the, the diamond? Um, I would, it really depends on, I use both of them probably an equal amount, uh, just in different ways. Interestingly, I would say the fuzz gets used a lot more for parts than it does for like soloing. Okay, okay. Um, although I do really love to like, 
there's probably at least one song a set where like I'll just do a straight up like fuzz thing just because yeah. it's so fun man, yeah. to play like the overtones and the sustain and stuff like that. Just it's let like, it rip. Yeah, totally. So um, so yeah, so there'll there there'll be at least a tune um, on on each live set where I, I just kind of freak out on that. But yeah, I use them. This that the diamond is really the one I guess that gets used more for like soloing. And okay. Stuff like that. And then what is the, the octopus? I'm not familiar with what this is. <laughs> so this is this is like a trip, man. I I I started playing in um, Sweden and Norway in like 2016 or 15, I think. Maybe it was it was either 16 or 15. Um, but um, there's this blog, this music, really cool music blog there called The Dust of Daylight, and they come to Americana Fest here in Nashville every year, and they film. Um, you know, various musical performances by uh, folks here in town that they dig. And I've, I've played it every year they've come to town. Like, we just, we became friends when I was over there, and, and I just love those guys. They're really awesome. Mm. So one of the guys who does some camera work for them builds these fuzz pedals. Um, and uh, his, his, <laughs> his favorite band is the Foo Fighters. So if you'll notice, there, it's got a little, like, uh, um, FF. Oh, okay. <laughs> down there, which is just, it's not, I don't think they endorse these pedals. Or no. Any, I think he just is a big Foo Fighters fan. Yeah. And so he just wanted people to know that and just figured he'd like put that it's on the pedal. Like, it's kind of like putting like a bumper sticker on your car. Like, ba basically, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like, a Tom Petty fan. You can see it in my rear view. Yeah, you know, yeah. my back mirror or exactly. back window. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's the co, it's the coexist of, of, uh, <laughs> Of guitar pedals. No, <laughs> I know that you for a long time you used the the Canyon Climber, which is like a companion uh, offshoot. I know I know the Jex Telez guys do their own kind of circuitry, mm. but it uh, they worked with Jonathan Wilson on that, and yeah. we reviewed it, and the, the reviewer loved it. So what made you was it just what made you go to that based after coming from the Canyon Climber? I loved the Canyon Climber. I just loved like the the like the craziness of this particular octave yeah. fuzz thing. Like it was it 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 added another like dimension to like a fuzz thing that mm. I could do. And particularly like on the song that I will solo on, I almost always use the octave fuzz sound on at some point on yeah. that just cuz it sounds so awesome. And then back to the Foo Fighter pedal, we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the knob what? like like a kind of like an input and you just you just that or what's a so it's basically just more it's just one knob yeah and that's what i love about it too is just the simplicity of it you know and so it's like um you know and and obviously like you the two knobs here is just like turning it on and off and then turning the octave on and off oh, okay so you can use it independent mm -hmm. yep well i i know maybe i don't know how much you use the fuzz or the octave fuzz with the 12 shrimp but can we hear it maybe before we head out absolutely yeah let's let's uh let's make it happen Bitchin', or as my <laughs> friend Pear would say, bitchin' Camaro. <laughs> Aaron, I can't thank you enough for not only you know doing this, letting us into your home, but hanging out with us. This has been a treat. I that would like to say this might be one of the most fun times I've had in the last <laughs> year. <laughs> but I should say, that people should go check out this record. Up All Night is a jammer, and Feminine Walk, which you kind of played pretty much a lot of it, will, people will love it, it's fun. Aaron, thank you so much. Thank you so much this for having me. It's great to do it in person. Thank you guys. We're off the Zoom shit, or at least partially. Thank you guys from your guitar. <laughs>